uh, he's still our best friend and the hijinks live on. That's so great. And obviously this be- this season has a big shape- shake up um, with Joe deciding to step away. I know a few of you said that this came as a shock to you, but did any of you see this coming? No, not really. I mean, you know, we knew Joe was working on some things and uh, then kind of when he came to us was right about when they had to make the announcement. And, uh, you know, we just got to, you know, give him a space and we have to respect, you know, his choice. And uh, we'd love to have him, but uh, we're having so much fun and we're like, our fans aren't over it yet. We we still feel like we have some stuff to do yet. And so we're like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll evolve the show like we normally do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if we don't have fun, uh, we'll stop. And I will say that none of us could have anticipated how much fun we actually had on these last nine episodes. It's something about introducing uh, these other people into it that it just inject this kind of, this energy uh, and dynamic that we hadn't had previous. Do you still have a relationship with Joe? Are you guys still friendly and, I you know? Still our best friend. We, yeah. we, we, we went out to dinner a few weeks ago, the four of us, and, uh, and, at the end of the meal, uh, the bill comes. Sal had to use the restroom. So when he came back from the bathroom, we had all took off we, if, without paying the bill, sticking him with the seven hundred dollar bill for the Italian restaurant. So, so uh, he, you know, uh, he's still our best friend, and the hijinks live on. <laughs> yeah. Do you, Do you think he'll be back, or do you think maybe he's uh, maybe you know in the future he'll he'll come back, or do you think he's done for good? I never know what the future holds. Yeah. I mean, we we have to make sure we're coming back, <laughs> you know, first. <laughs> tackle that and then down the line you know you know who knows it's like just taking it day by day right now you know definitely and the universe of infinite possibilities all things are possible (laughs) is it hard for you guys touring and managing family and personal lives does it ever get to be too much for you (laughs) (laughs) i would say uh absolutely It doesn't stop. <laughs> it's, it's like Somebody every, help me. I mean, well, Sal's falling apart. I mean, I, I'll tell you that right now. He's, you and I handling it well. Yeah, he's hanging on by his last thread. I, I don't know if you can tell coming through the camera. Send help. <laughs> he's really just hanging on by his fingertips. Uh, I cry daily. Yeah, he really does. He does. He does. He speaks in that voice. It gets on. Yeah. It is strange how Sal is dealing with his problems by using a high-pitched alter voice. <laughs> Did you ever think that you would have such a fan base and that this would become what it is today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Next question. <laughs> Wrap it up, right? <laughs> uh, no, not, not even close. <laughs> I remember when the first season or two, I didn't do my hair because you just don't think anyone's going to watch. <laughs> and then it like caught on and, I, and then I'd be watching it on television. I'd be like, I'd be mortified that it. I literally roll out of bed. I'm not even joking around. I was like, yeah, this old thing. No one's going to see it. We had no makeup artists the first two seasons. Like we just yeah, walked not on yet. camera. When, and then <laughs> at the end of Somehow season, we still look worse right now. So the first two seasons, they shot in standard definition. That's how long we've been on TV, right? Right. They shot in standard definition and we looked fine. It was a friend. Standard definition yeah. was our friend. Yeah. <laughs> season three, they upgraded to high def and we're like, oh, that's what we look like on TV. <laughs> Ratings took an immediate hit when we went to high def. <laughs> I love it. So did my mom. So funny. I mean, is it still, is it hard now to pull off the jokes because so many people obviously know who you are. Does it make it more challenging each and every season? Pretty much, yeah. It's gotten uh, harder as we went along. We, we we learned how to circumvent it. We have all these tricks we use, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, ultimately, uh, every single day, we have to account for a certain percentage of people realizing who we are and then replacing them. So, yeah, it's, it's built into the show at this point. A lot of people ask us, like, how could you even do it? Because they assume, like, everyone knows us, but... Not everyone, you know, it's, we just, not everyone knows us. <laughs> not true. I mean, so what can fans expect from this season? You said, you know, you're just wrapping it up. Is there like an, a certain episode or a joke that you can't wait for everybody to see? Well, I mean, the big thing about season nine is uh, at the end of every episode, th- there's a celebrity guest that's part of the punishment against one of the Jokers. So we have everybody from Colin Jost to Jillian Bell, Chris Method Jericho, Man, Chris Jericho, David Cross, Alice and Gabriel. Uh, Adam uh, Allie Allie and Gabriel. And, yeah. What did I say? John Alice Gabriel. and Gabriel. You did that thing. <laughs> I do that thing that I do. It's so funny because we're working on a bit right now about how I always mispronounce things. And it's really quite mean because it is 
it is at the end of the day a speech impediment but for some reason in today's enlightened world where everybody's super sensitive about everything i can't get my friends to treat my disability with respect <laughs> they just make fun of me constantly about it and uh, i'd like to shine a light on that maybe get one of those wristbands uh, or, or, or a month dedicated to my some kind of ribbon around a tree. Yeah, can somewhere. we wrap a ribbon around a tree about how I speak? Well, speaking of the, the last couple of guests we didn't mention, tell them about Brooke Riggle and Rob Shields. You see, you see how it never stops. <laughs> Brooke Shields and Rob Riggle. <laughs> I had a stroke. This is just not funny. <laughs> he actually. I actually did. <laughs> so it's not it is, funny. It is actually you can laugh funny. about it now on the whole yeah. chair. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. brain just went. <laughs> I mean, did you have a, who was the most fun on set? The most fun celebrity on set? Oh my God. Oof. They all brought something to the table. Um, we had relationships with a lot of them. The way, the way that we selected it were the guests were people that we really were excited to to do something with and we thought were interesting, not just like any old bookings, you know? So uh, a lot of the guests we have a relationship with already, I think that came through. And I think because of that, they were ready to just take the bull by the horns. And so a lot of the punishments, we we literally built out around them and their skill sets. So I think that in that respect, everyone was able to really like make, make the most of it. So it's not a political answer. like. I don't think anyone walked away from the nine episodes yeah. where we were like, oh my God, they really killed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And obviously, That's you know, this it, it was pretty wild watching Brooke Shields uh, in, in The Punishment. Uh, she's the host of a mock dating show, like a brand new TV show coming on called Brooke of Love. And uh, it was watching, it was fun watching her, uh, us turn her screws and her turn it back on us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 